All right, you're welcome back. And this is the first edition of COVID-19 360. And basically, we're capturing the pandemic and also giving you up-to-date information on the disease, how you can also protect yourself, especially at this point where we've been asked to stay indoors. And so what's all the information that you require in order to stay safe? And not only in Ghana, in terms of updates on number of cases recorded, number of um, you know, recovery um, you know, cases and all of that, but also we'll take you all the way to the rest of Africa and give you insights on what's happening in the other countries as well. My name is Berla Mundi and I'm not doing this alone. Anita Ekufu is joining me and so she would also assist with all the details that you need in terms of statistics and all of that. Just this morning, a few minutes ago, we had the information minister along with the Minister for Health and also the Minister for Gender and Social Protection giving us updates on what they are doing um, you know, to protect some citizens who are described as vulnerable. So the homeless, KIA, street children, and all of that and also the Minister of Health gave us updates on what exactly the testing situation would be like and the fact that we're not going for compulsory mass testing and so that information was wrong what's happening is that they're doing contact tracing and for people who enter the country between the 15th of March up until now they'll be um, getting in touch with them to make sure that if they do have symptoms they will test them and be sure that they don't have the disease and if they do then treatment can proceed as well and so even Easy, relax. We still have, um, you know, some test kits in the country that are going to be used. But Anita is here as well, and she gives us an update on the situation in relation to the numbers at this point. So, Anita. Yeah, all right, Bella, good morning. Well, as of uh, 31st March 2020, uh, new cases of COVID-19 had been reported, and this is on the uh, Ghana Health Service page, and it says that we have 106 confirmed cases, three have recovered, and also 19 have been discharged home for home management, and okay. also for uh, the, those who are responding to treatment as well, we have 80 Okay. And then for those in critical conditions, we have none as well, and five deaths. And Ghana's situation... Well, well not to cut you, but just right. a quick update. Based on the Ministry of Information uh, press this morning, they said that the cases had jumped up to 195. Yesterday, it was 161, and just this morning, we have 195 cases. They broke it down for us as well. And so just in case you're a bit confused, I'm sure that they have not They haven't updated, updated it, so exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and talking about the updates and all of that, when you cross-check across the various online platforms, you realize that most of the numbers are quite different. Mm -hmm. We're not having very uniform numbers yeah. uh, worldwide or even right here in Africa as well. So you can cross-check and then be very sure of the numbers we have, but they won't be specific as well. Well, we have yeah. 79 confirmed cases uh, when we're talking about Ghana's situation, mandatory quarantine, in Accra and the discharged home management, we have 31 as well. And in Ghana's situation, mandatory quarantine in Tamale, we still have 10 confirmed cases. And also Ghana's total confirmed cases. Well, it's updated here that we have 195 cases as of 1st April, which is today. And also uh, moving on swiftly, let's go on to the world stage that is no, no. we have Okay, so just quickly before we even take a look at, um, you know, the numbers across the world, we know that 4,560 tests have been conducted. Out of that, 195 cases have been confirmed positive. We've experienced five deaths, and it was conducted in five regions. So we had the Greater Accra, which um, recorded 174 cases. Then we have the Ashanti region with nine cases, uh, the Northern region with 10, Upper West with one, and Eastern region with one. So we're quickly going back to the press conference to take a listen uh, to what the Minister for Health, uh, Honorable Kweku Ajiman Menu, talked about concerning the numbers. And so just listen to this real quick. There are two patients we may release who have tested negative on two consecutive occasions also in Accra. Kumasaf, there is no case on action at the moment. The only case we have the opted for home care, and the doctors have allowed that. So he's also in home care. Konfanochi Teaching Hospital. There's a case on admission. Repeat tests showed negative. But later, I think on the test, it showed positive. I put that person on hydroxychloroquine, and we are awaiting results for repeat tests. Obwasi, the first case, 
there are two cases. For the first case, we are doing repeat tests and it's showing negative. The second repeat test, again negative. So the doctors seem to have accepted that the person is old now. For the second case, who was also in contact with the first case, tested positive. Twelve contacts have been identified along that line and they are in self-quarantine at the moment, also in Obuasi. Obuasi has two home care cases. One has been put on hydroxychloroquine. While there is one case, again, home care, there is one contact with that person, and we are using test results. Tamale, there are 10 cases they start treatment today. The Interior Minister is working with the Foreign Minister to try to see if these people can be taken back to their countries, their offers. But that process diplomatically has not been completed. And they are under order from the President to let them get back to their country. They entered our country illegally when borders had been closed. And so if you are found, Definitely, you have broken laws, and you have to be taken back to your country. UGMC, University of Ghana Medical Center, that is ready for use. Training has been completed. There are 14 beds for holding area and 14 beds for treatment. Five ICU beds are also ready. So we have UMC dedicated again some part of the facility to put in patients. Bank of Ghana Hospital. I kept on telling community, the people in Ghana, that the Minister of Health hasn't got direct jurisdiction over Bank of Ghana Hospital. And people were blasting that there are hospitals completed that will not be utilized and all that. We have had engagement with Bank of Ghana and they have released two floors to take care of 20 beds for our use. Because the facility doesn't belong to the Ministry of Health, Bank of Ghana has agreed that their own people and some VI personnel will be allowed there. So in case we get some of you here, I VIP people, we are clear to take you to Bank of Ghana Hospital. Why are you laughing? You are all VIP people. In material, Okay. So I will call the fact that we are ready to take people in and uh, make sure they are getting well. We are also arranging to disinfect areas that we quarantine people, and when we evacuate and the places become empty, we have made arrangements for such disinfection to be done before we hand over the facility to the owners. Uh, let me now move away from case management to look at why we have been asked to stay home. So the surveillance report for this morning. We have recorded 195 cases with five days. The number of against reporting cases remain five. Greater Accra, Ashani, Northing, and Upper West. The Greater Accra region has the most cases, 174, followed by the Northern region, 10, East region has 9, Upper West region 1, and Eastern region 1. Most reported cases now are from routine enhanced surveillance activities. 
cases from travelers under mandatory quarantine remain 89. That means that we have taken all their samples, we have done, we have got the those positive and those negative are still in hotels observing the mandatory 14 day quarantine pre period. Cases from travelers under mandatory quarantine remain 89. That is Tamale 10, Accra 79. Whereas cases from routine surveillance currently stands at 106. Accra 95, Kumasi 8, Obuasi 2. As at 08 hours this morning, I will summarize it in a table of form. General surveillance 106, travelers on the way mandatory quarantine, 79 positive, in Accra and in Mali, 10. So the total figures recovered and discharged, 38. Discharged home management, 49. Those in treatment facilities, 138. Dead, 5. So we have total reported cases, 195. Let me go over again because very important the type of explanation my colleague and younger brother could you tried to explain. I will stress there is no policy asset for compulsory mass testing that people are just parading and trading in on social media. If anybody amongst those managing COVID-19 team had gone on there anywhere or even on social media and had said that we are doing mass testing in some communities. And that's our Minister for Health, uh, Honorable Kweku Ajiman Menu, and he was just updating us uh, with figures in terms of number of people who have recovered, our home, number of people that have tested positive, and all of that. And it's interesting because just yesterday, uh, there was no recorded case. Exactly. Well, it was two days ago, mm -hmm. there was no recorded case, and we were happy about it and saying, maybe the lockdown yeah. um, you know, has done us some good. And then yesterday, it moved to 15161, and, and now we're at 195. Uh, there's cause to worry, maybe. And that's why I guess we all have to stay home. Well, I think so. The staying at home is very important. The social distance and hand washing and all of that is very important. But I think it's uh, going a little higher because we're doing more testing. And also the people we quarantined, uh, you know, undergoing the test, testing positive and then some negative as well. So the numbers definitely will be going higher in the coming yeah. weeks or days. Uh, we should expect more numbers, I think. Definitely. And, and speaking of testing, I mean, like I keep saying, the WHO has asked exactly. that we test, test, test. And it's important because for a lot of these other countries like the United States of America, Italy, Germany and all that, the reason why they are recording high numbers it's is because, because they are, they are doing testing. More tests. And so I like that they've mentioned that there will be some random tests, um, you know, in some areas yeah. in Greater Accra and also in the Ashanti region. They are not compulsory. They are looking out, first of all, for people who may have come into contact with travelers that were uh, quarantined mandatorily and also looking out for people who may have symptoms as well. And so for those of you who traveled into the country from the 15th all the way till now, if you've noticed any symptoms, they've given a number for you to call, which is 112. Get in touch with them. Let them know what your symptoms are. And if there's a need for them to get to you and conduct a test, they definitely will do so. This is COVID-19 360, where we're giving you up to date information on what's happening in Ghana, in Africa, and the rest of the world with relation to coronavirus. We'll be back. There's more. Welcome back to COVID-19 360, and we are on air for the next hour and a half to keep you updated on happenings around the world, especially in Africa and in Ghana, concerning the coronavirus pandemic. And of course, to give you some updates on what um, you know moves have been made as well. So currently, only 11 of the 54 states in Africa are yet to record any case of the deadly coronavirus. And that means that 80% of the continent has recorded a case of COVID-19. The 42 states so far have 
have recorded a total of 4,967, close to 5,000 cases. South Africa leads the charge with over 1,314 cases. There, however, are fears that these numbers might later in the week see an increase, not just in South Africa, but across the continent. Now, the top 10 nations with the most cases accounts for 85% of the continent's total case count. 24 countries still have single digits in terms of number of positive cases. Now, the good news, however, is that close to 80% of the continent's afflicted states are yet to hit the 100 mark of positive cases here in Ghana. So this is the breakdown. For South Africa, we have 1,314. And Anita will give us the uh, remaining information on the specific numbers as per the countries. Exactly, Bella. Like you mentioned, South Africa has 1,314 cases. That is the highest so far. Moving straight on to Algeria, which has 716 cases. And Egypt has 710. Tunisia, 394. Burkina Faso has 261. And the interesting thing is that Ghana was on the ninth, mm. was ninth on the list. Uh, but unfortunately, we've replaced Cameroon, which is sixth, uh, meaning now Cameroon is on the ninth, and then Ghana is the sixth with 195 cases. Mm. Uh, coming next to Cote d'Ivoire with 179 cases, Senegal 175, and then Nigeria with 135. But that is for the top 10 in Africa. Interesting. Now, exactly. Going down, we have um, two digit numbers Congo, Rwanda. Kenya, Madagascar, Uganda, Zambia, Niger, and the rest have single digits. Okay. So that is fairly good when you come to Africa as well, Sobella. Well, yes, but I mean, talking about lives lost, even one person means a lot to us, and so we're hoping that we can curb this pandemic even before it gets worse. Talking about single digits countries, uh, we have Zimbabwe with eight confirmed cases out of 141 tests, and we'll be speaking to a political economist from Zimbabwe, Dr. Monashe Matambo, um, all the way from Zimbabwe Department of Political and Administrative Studies at the University of Zimbabwe. He joins us on Skype. Thank you so much, Doctor, uh, for uh, accepting to do this. I hope you are well. Uh, um, thank you for having me. All right. So just to confirm, Zimbabwe currently has recorded, what, eight cases out of how many tests conducted? 241 tests. Okay. And um, if I may ask, your numbers are pretty low. Could that be a good sign or could it also mean that not enough tests have been conducted and so you don't have a clear picture of what the situation could be on the ground? I think it's a good sign because the president has taken a lot of mitigating um, steps to okay. prevent the spread of coronavirus. Um, two weeks ago, all state universities and schools were shut down. Mm. Uh, first of all, uh, last Friday, the, uh, the president declared a 21-day lockdown mm. on all entities, except for those who are involved in the essential services, particularly the security forces and um, those who want to seek urgent medical care. So okay. I think the government of Zimbabwe has taken a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, significant steps to try and reduce the spread of, virus, of the virus. Okay. Now, talking about the lockdown being one of the mitigating factors, how easy has it been implementing this 21-day lockdown, especially concerning, um, you know, the, the, the informal sector and their complaints that they might have to still work in order to make some money for themselves? Has it been easy? Uh, it's not been easy. 85% um, of Zimbabwe's economy is informal. Okay. Uh, therefore, therefore a, a, a lot of people have been left vulnerable. Mm. However, the good part is that um, besides President Debaton Munangago's efforts, opposition leader um, Nelson Chamisa, as well as Dr. Nkosana Moyo, as mm. well as uh, Dr. Noah Manika, okay. have also been urging the Zimbabwean population to stay at home during this, these trying times. Mm. Um, the government of Zimbabwe has also come up with various uh, social safety nets. For example, the 2020 budget, the capital expenditure of the 2020 budget has been redirected okay. toward um, mitigating uh, the coronavirus. Mm. Uh, the Minister of Finance has um, pledged approximately 20 million US dollars mm -hmm. uh, towards this cause. It may not be enough, but development partners yeah. um, such as um, the DFID of the United Kingdom have pledged... Um, 100,000 pounds, the British government has pledged 1.7 million pounds 
Okay. The Chinese government is assisting the government of Zimbabwe mm. in um, upgrading some of its hospitals, particularly Wilson uh, Wilkin, Wilkin Hospital in Harare, which is the main center okay. for, for referrals pertaining to this virus. All right. Now, the $20 million that you said has been redirected from the 2020 budget. What exactly yeah. is that going to be spent on? And I'm asking this in relation to Ghana and how we set up, uh, aside some money for education, um, you know, for some facilities and a few other things as well. What is the $20 million going to be spent on? And have they started working towards that? Um, the Minister of Finance in his um, press release on the 30th of March was not very specific. He just mentioned that it would be spent on health-related issues. He, he said he's going to present another statement soon on, a specific, on specific measures or specific appropriations that are going to be made. Okay. Now, you have yes. record... Mm -hmm. You were saying something. I'm listening. Okay. Uh, Let me ask you this. You've recorded one death so far. Yes. What was the situation with this particular person? Were there any underlying conditions... Yes, um, this, uh, this person is said to have had an operation uh, last, last year. Okay. Uh, if I was mistaken, I think he had a, tu uh, a tumor somewhere, somehow. So um, there were underlying factors. Mm. However, uh, there have been reports on social media, particularly Twitter, that okay. government has been reporting some cases. Um, the, however, these cases are not confirmed. I'm not sure whether it's true or people are just trying to cause social despondence. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, back, back to the issue of the budget and how much money has been spent on, you know, fighting the virus. Is there a cap amount to be given back to, especially the informal sector, which you said makes up about 85% of the country's population? Is there any plan to provide them with some food, with some money? And also for businesses as well, are there any stimulus packages that are being made available for them? So far, the Minister of Finance, Professor Mtuli Ngube, has pledged um, 200, million, uh, 200 million Zimbabwe dollars. Okay. That's uh, 8 million US dollars. All right. Approximately million US dollars um, to cushion the vulnerable 1 million urban dwellers. That okay. implies that um, each household will be getting approximately 7 US dollars a month. Mm. Uh, I don't think this would be enough, but at least government has done something. At least, at least. Okay, are there any cases of brutalities in ensuring that people respect the law and stay indoors? Uh, by nature, Zimbabweans are a very peaceful, are a very peaceful nation. There is no report of any violence at all at the present moment. If you were to see videos of the streets of Harare, Harare, as we speak, is virtually empty. The only people you see in central Harare right now are health workers who are disinfecting uh, taxi ranks in Harare. There is absolutely no one. I think it's because all political leaders have called upon the people of Zimbabwe to stay at home. People of Zimbabwe have got great, great respect for their political leaders and they are taking heed of them. Mm. And the president has not yet deployed the, security, the, 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 the defense forces. The police are the ones who are the ones who are very much visible at the present moment. The president said you only deploy the army okay. when, when the need arises. Okay. All right. Yes. And, and speaking of social distancing as well, are people adhering to that? And I'm talking about maybe the public transport and the few people who might be providing some essential services and all of that. How easy has it been implementing the social distancing um, you know, um, um, law as well? The president has banned all private taxi operators. Only um, government buses uh, called Zupo are operating and they are only carrying a, a minimum number of people. Mm. And these buses are being uh, disinfected both uh, when people board the bus and when people leave the bus. Mm. So government uh, taking a lot of measures. Furthermore, not everyone can board these buses. You have to get clearance from the police okay. uh, to board buses. You really have to be working for the critical service sector to mm. board these buses. So even the media is not working? Um, some, uh, uh, the Herald in particular is working. Uh, the Herald is a parasite. It's, uh, it's working in collaboration um, with the Ministry of Information. I see. It was a 
yes, the president asked the Ministry of Information um, to make sure that information, information dissemination still exists um, right. during this type of crisis. Okay, my final question to you before you go. What could be the impact on the economy of Zimbabwe, which we all do understand uh, hasn't been the best in the last few um, you know, years as well? What could be the impact? Could it be dire? Um, I think Zimbabwe won't experience uh, much of a shock from this because um, the economy is already, is, is, already, is already in a dire state. Yeah. Uh, we are navigating through dire fiscal straits and the economy is on the verge of a precipice. An international um, economic crisis at the present moment yeah. uh, would not have much of an impact on the economy of Zimbabwe. Hmm. Interesting. Dr. Monashe Matamba, thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. He's a political economist uh, at a university in Zimbabwe. Thank you very much. Now, the measures, particularly on social distancing, put in place to contain the coronavirus spread in the country appear not to have gone down well with sections of the public. The following report chronicles some breaches on the second day of the lockdown imposed on Greater Kumasi, Greater Accra and Kaswa. Social distancing is an effort to prevent the transmission of coronavirus in large crowds to enforce its importance. Schools from the basic to the tertiary level have been closed down throughout the country. Gatherings of more than 25 people have been outlawed. Employees have been advised to work remotely from home to reduce interaction with others. A lockdown of Greater Kumasi and Accra, including Kaswa in the central region, is enforced to contain the coronavirus spread. Arrangements have been made to ensure that only essential service providers are allowed to work with a view to promote social distancing during the period. These exemptions include traders who sell food and food commodities. But some people are flouting the directive with impunity. The Suyame Municipal Chief Executive, Dr. John Osei Bobie, who was enraged over the situation, ordered the immediate shutdown of the markets. He indicated that traders had flouted an earlier arrangement to ensure only a limited number of them assess the markets thereby putting themselves and others at risk of contracting the deadly disease. The situation was no different at Kaswa, where patronage at the market was high. Drivers would also not adhere to the new directive of passenger seating. Passenger carrying vehicles, including taxi seating, one to three passengers in a row, are to seat not more than two passengers in a row. Passenger carrying vehicles seating one to four passengers in a row are to seat not more than three passengers in a row. Passenger carrying vehicles seating one to five passengers on a row are expected to seat not more than three passengers in a row. At the Teshi Bushwood Junction in Accra, hundreds of commuters were asked to return home by security personnel at the checkpoints. The Defence Minister, Dominic Nitiwu, on his retained tower of checkpoints, urged the security personnel to order non-essential service providers to go back home. Um, some uh, people think that uh, this lockdown is a joke. From what I have seen, it's, it's clear that some people just want to test the system and then see. We have given them the orders to enforce the lockdown strictly. They will not beat people, they will not molest people, but trust me, they would enforce it strictly. At the Tuesday market at Manprobi, also in Accra, it was business as usual. Those who traded outside the food value chain were also present. The social distancing directive was not being observed. You find behind me hundreds of people trooping to the markets to buy and sell. 
But are they observing social distance? Do they even know what this means and its implications? Well, this was obviously one of the reasons why President Akufuado directed that there should be a partial lockdown. If you are going to continue like this, then it means that we have a very long way to go. Coronavirus, a spread via respiratory droplets that might end up on your hands if they are coughed on or you touch surfaces that have been coughed on. And that was a report on social distancing and how difficult it has been for a section of the public to comply to the president's directive. And I believe that there's a bit of confusion, especially um, with people who uh, provide essential services, being the food sector, because then how many people should be allowed into the market? At what point can a civilian go to the market to buy? Is there really a structure for that? Because yesterday there was an issue in the Ashanti region where the market uh, women just trooped the market whether or not they had the ID card to indicate that they were part of the first batch of market women who were allowed to sell. And that caused some chaos until the MCE came in to resolve the issue as well. Now, even aside that, let's even talk about, um, you know, public transport and how that may be difficult for a few people. And also the appearance of some security personnel exactly. along our streets. I still haven't seen as many. I haven't come across a barrier from my house to the office. I've seen just a few of them standing just monitoring but there's been no barrier to ask and to check where you're going and whether you are allowed to even be out in the first place i don't know about you well yesterday somewhere around um, 1 p.m i used a 37 stretch and then okay. there was a barrier where you get to and then you're interrogated your staff id where are you going to you know that kind of mm. basic interrogation but this morning uh maybe i would say it's because of the rains okay yes yeah. maybe but the barrier was nowhere to be found i saw people moving around normally and i'm like this looks quite normal you know on a normal day when yeah. i'm coming to work so i was wondering are people really staying at home I, I think it's also because on the first day of the lockdown, a lot of people were monitoring to see how it, it would, how go, it would exactly. be. Exactly. And then they realized that the measures put in place weren't as stringent, so they decided to test the waters. A few people have had a few issues with mm -hmm. the security where they've been asked to turn back um, and go home. And so this morning during the press conference as well, Brigadier Insia mentioned emphatically that starting from tomorrow, mm -hmm. there'll be less cars and less people, especially because people are flouting the rules and, you know, they are stepping out for no reason. You saw that video of the man who said that he just came out to come and see what, exactly. what was happening. And I keep saying that the more we're not going by the rules, the precautionary measures, the more we we'll have to do this. Mm -hmm. Because if you stay at home and you're not saying, I'm just coming to watch what is going on in town, are the policemen really there? Are the soldiers in town? I mean, we'll go a long way. If this goes all the way to June, I won't be surprised, honestly. I really won't be. And for a lot of cases in the Western world as well, it's been reported by some doctors that there could be a second round exactly. of infections, even after we've resolved this. So another round of coronavirus infections later uh, this year, if but we don't that, take that, care. That uh, takes me to my worry. Uh, the people that were discharged to go home for home management. We've seen cases where in China, people who tested they positive still. initially, later on tested um, negative and then came back and to then positive. Came back, so yeah. what is that assurance that people who've been discharged home for home management will not test positive again? I think that should also be looked at as well. Well, we've had a discussion with some doctors. I remember two days ago, we spoke to Dr. Bertha and she is an infectious disease specialist in the United States. Yesterday as well, there was another um, you know, doctor who spoke to John who's on hot issues and they both said the same things basically if you're testing them and they you know they, they test from their throat okay. and from their nasal I think they call it the nasal pharyngeal something I'm not sure <laughs> I don't have the terms now after a while if they tend to test negative at that point there could be some virus in their fecal matter as well and so if you don't test that and they go home and live under unhygienic conditions it's very likely that they, they might infect course, other people yeah. and so there's a need to keep testing over and over and the minister for health mentioned that even for the people who we will not say have you know um, recovered clear, fully yeah. they've just been discharged to go home whilst they are still being monitored now what they did was to test them about three four times and they tested negative so that's why they've allowed them to go home but in the meantime they'll still make sure that they're regularly. checking on yeah. them to ensure they don't have the virus in them and so I'm sure as the studies uh, go on we'll find out more about coronavirus and whether you can fully recover from the virus and also might be immune. That's also another question I was asking. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like that's possible. But yeah, we'll, we'll give you more updates. We'll be 
be speaking to Shatawale later on yes. um, on the show. And basically, we're asking for someone like Shatawale, who is very vocal on social media, it's easier to reach out to the fans. But as a musician, as an entertainer, as an arts person, what can you do uh, during this period of lockdown to also keep yourself going and to keep the business going as well. And he's also done some charitable um, you know, exactly. things for a lot of people, giving out sanitizers and all that. So we'll speak to him. But let us know what your thoughts are, uh, if you have any questions as well, Anita. Well, moving on, though not so many people will be happy with the behavior of these individuals we just saw, they cannot be entirely blamed. There seems to be a lack of leadership. Well, watch this video when we come back this more. All right, and that is still an issue of social distancing where we're comparing the UK Parliament, who, by the way, uh, have their MPs adhering to the directive and our Ghanaian Parliament, where you can clearly see that they, they, they were quite close. And this was on the day that the finance minister went to Parliament to explain how we intend to make some money, um, you know, for uh, fighting the coronavirus. And also, this is where the issue of the Heritage Fund came up as well. And so clearly, it doesn't look like they were practicing social distancing. And so even if at the top we have cases like this, how um, easy or difficult was it, would it be for civilians to also adhere to that as well? And there was another issue about the security personnel and the fact that some of them on the first day of the lockdown were interacting with civilians without a face mask, without their gloves, and they were in close proximity with the people. And so if there was any virus being transferred, it would have been done easily. And so we hope that moving forward, they adhere to all of that as well. But yeah, that's the comparison. Anita, you have some figures for us. Yes, I do. Well, this is um, the, the world or the global stage. And we have a total um, number of 873,767 total confirmed cases. And mm -hmm. the total deaths, we have 43,288. Well, Italy is still uh, leading the chart with 12,428 Oh, in deaths. terms of death. Exactly. Okay. And it looks like, let me highlight more on the uh, number of recovered cases as well. We have 184,771 recovered cases. That is some good news, I should say. Yeah. But uh, leading that chart as well is China with 76,382 recovered cases, followed by Spain. Well, they have more deaths as well, 8,464 deaths. It goes on and on to um, Germany, Italy, that is talking about the totally uh, recovered cases we have. We have France in there, Switzerland, and it looks like the countries with more cases are having more um, recoveries as well, and that is some yeah. good news, I should say. Now, interestingly, the U.S. Um, has the highest number of confirmed cases, yes. and they went past Italy, mm -hmm. which was in the lead a few weeks ago, about two weeks ago. Now, exactly. U.S. is at, what, 100 and. 
89,633. And Italy is 105,792. But even across these countries, it has been said and reported that the number of cases being recorded are reducing. And so uh, from, I think, this week, it looks like the numbers have reduced. Now, the U.S. recorded cases that were about 58%. You know, there was a jump, about 58% two weeks ago. Just last week, based on the number of cases that they recorded, it was 17%. And that is to confirm further that the cases are reducing. And that's because maybe social distancing exactly. is working to a large extent. And also people are also adhering to the safety precautionary measures. We'll have more discussions coming up. We'll still give you some more figures. If you have any questions to ask, if you have any contributions, you're not clear on something, let us know via social media at TV3 Ghana on all platforms. And the hashtag is COVID-19360. Anita and I will be back with some phone interviews. Well, okay, I think we'll have to just jump straight into our conversation with Shata Wale before we go on this break. Good morning, Shata. I hope you're doing well. Hi, hi, mommy. How are you doing? <laughs> it's good to see you this morning. Yeah, I'm good. You know, I was actually having a screening down in yeah. you know, my pre you know, yeah. How difficult has it been for you as an artist in these times, um, you know, where we're supposed to stay away from each other, where under lockdown, coronavirus has brought the world to its knees? How has it affected your craft? Well, I think uh, it's been difficult. I think it has not been easy for people like me because... Mm. Um, um, I, I, I think uh, this coronavirus is, uh, is really affected, like, our work, you know, getting, you know, closer to our fans, you know, getting businesses here and there. As you know, we, yeah. we travel a lot to you know, do stuff, but I think um, it's our time, you know, we learn how to, you know, make hay while the sun shines and, you know, wait Absolutely. for the rainy day. And, yeah. Even before making here while the sun shines, have you had to cancel some shows, some business meetings, and has it cost you a lot? Well, yes. Actually, I was supposed to go on my U.S. tour like um, um, this this April. I I was going to U.S. this April, but because of that, we we, we just canceled it, and uh, we have to reschedule everything, and we don't know when this thing is going to get you know done. That's sad. But how have you been making here whilst the sun? Uh, was shining. You know me. Um, uh, I'm the type of artist that you know is always being checked by my team, apart from my team, my dad. Yeah. You know, so I can say you know I've really saved a lot. You know, so um, I'm not uh, really bothered so much. You know, it's just about okay. managing and making sure you know things go well. And I'm supporting a couple of people as well. I noticed, you know, like especially my farm, my my area. You know, people. I have given things to. So many people talk about Volta, Kumasi, Takwari. Like, I'm doing a whole lot to help people. So Break it down for me in terms of doing a whole lot. I know you've been giving a lot of sanitizers. There have been a lot of things that you've done. And you also hold a church service on Twitter on Sundays as well. So give us a breakdown on all those things that you've been doing, especially for your fans. Well, I think um, this is the time where I feel people need love. People need um, togetherness and unity. So basically... You know, um, I decided, you know, when I just heard of this and, you know, saw how the outbreak was going and the numbers going up, you know, I, I just decided, you know, to, you know, give out a few things, which I quickly bought, like, thousands of sanitizers, you know, shared it around, and later I started getting support from Casa uh, from the Kofi Abam Foundation, okay. from Infinix, you know, because I'm working with all these people, and um, I got something from CB Capsules, you know, and... Um, 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 my new um, contract I signed with um, a new um, um, bet, you know, company. You've been making That's money. A, bet <laughs> <I'm trying. laughs> a lot of money. You know? But it's good that you're yeah. giving out. Now, you did mention earlier as well, when there was that conversation about celebrities in Ghana teaming up with governments to educate the public a bit more on coronavirus and eventually becoming ambassadors, you seem not to be for the free ambassadorial role. Why was that? Well, you know, this is Ghana. And, you know, if I could just give you a few examples. Um, this is the same country that celebrities are always, like, you know, screaming, you know, shouting, you know, for us to get, like, um, support from government and we're not getting, like, let me give you an example. Like, from Great Norte, who could come on TV and say, 
um, Ghanaians to support her from taxi driver, Papa Ni, yeah. who we all know on TV. You know, we talk about Akpache, who has a, an eye problem, and yeah. you know, no one is bothered about it. These are all celebrities that we have in Ghana, mm -hmm. and they supported Ghana so much. But um, when they are in need, you know, I feel you know nobody comes to their aid, and I really want to take this opportunity, you know, to really you know echo it into the minds of people who call themselves celebrities that yeah. it's best you save and work like you work hard and save money so that. When people come to you for businesses, they're going to know you're a business person. In Shatter, I always tell people, I do music, I entertain, uh, in quote, I fool around a lot. I yeah. tell people I'm a comedian. Um, but um, it's business for me. You know, I okay. feel when I entertain people, I'm going to get paid for it. So if government wants me to play a role like this, I'm not just saying that because I love money, because, you know, I want money, or because yeah. I like buying flashy stuff. But it is business for me. Okay. It is time that I'm going to use to do this. And I recently heard, you know, um, 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 Jackie Apia saying, you know, a whole lot about me. And she's my mom, though. But I, I just want to tell her that we hope and pray she's also saving money because we don't want to get, get her come to say that, you know, she doesn't have money in future okay. and stuff like that. Because we've seen celebrities come like that and, yeah. you know, nothing has gone well for them. So okay. it's basically, you know, business for me. You know? Definitely. Now, you are supposed to have a concert on the 4th of April. And there's mm. a ban on public gatherings and yeah. all of that. If the ban yeah. is not lifted, what are you going to do? Well, you know, I'm just, you know, paying the laws of the country and making sure I don't violate it, you know. So I'm actually having a concert in my house okay. just with me and the band, you know, a four-man band. So with you, it's going to be five people, you know. The only thing that I'm going to have around me is um, the technicians that are going to stream it live on, mm. on social media. No, so in all, we just 10 people because um, okay. the, 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 exact, the exact amount of people that are supposed to go to a gathering are 25. You know, that's what yeah. the, the law says. But I am making sure I have just 10 people. So um, I've, I've, I've written letters to the um, um, police um, for them to give me support. Okay. You know, and I'm also getting a few supports from, you know, one or two people. So okay. basically, I'm not violating the law. It's just right. like me in studio, you know, doing a live video and making people have fun. And it's a time that I think people need us more to entertain. And Absolutely. Shata, I always want to get my fans close to me. So basically, that's why I'm having this on the 4th of April. And that's all your fans thing. get to watch you online. Yeah, they're going to get me. They're going to watch me online. You Definitely. Know? Like, I'm going to have fun. I'm, I'm going to show them. There's a segment that I'm going to show them how to use the sanitizer. Oh, great. Yeah, you know. Speaking so of which, maybe since would, you're talking about sanitizer, do you have one close to you? <laughs> we want you to demonstrate yes, how to use the sanitizer. Do you have one close to you? Oh, I can, I can let my chef get one. Chef! Oh. We were hoping that you teach us even more how to sanitize no, your hands. Because there was a video that was going round about how we weren't chef, doing it the right way. Chef, well, we're going to get Shatawale to teach us on TV live. <laughs> How yeah. he sanitizes his hands as well. So wherever yeah. Chef is, please tell Chef to hurry up. We want to see how yeah, that goes. Yeah, but even whilst we're waiting for him to bring the sanitizer, do you, what message do you have for all the millions of people who love you, follow you on social media, and want to hear from you? Well, I just want to tell everybody that really loves Shatawale and feels, you know, I'm entertaining and I'm funny and, you know, uh, I'm serious at my work. Yeah. Um, that, you know, this is a time that we need to come together and believe in God. This is a time that we need to really know that um, um, we need each other, you know, because this whole thing, coronavirus thing, is not a thing that we have to take for a joke. So um, I believe um, we should support each other, you know. Um, this is the time you need to help your neighbor. And this, this is the time that money is not even important now. Lives are important. So yeah. when you feel you have some you need to share with the next person you live in an area where you feel you have money and you see your neighbors that are hustling just try and you know buy them some few food stuffs you know not Absolutely. money but get them food great you know because i, I am, i'm thinking more about how people are going to eat you know this lockdown is even, is even you know worrying me so much because you know most of my fans live in the slums talk yeah. about uh, um, kokumba you know talk about kantamanto yeah you know a whole lot of places that you can think of you know so um i just want people to really support each other. And I'll Definitely. be happy if, you know, people will take this advice from me. But here's my sanitizer. Joke. Okay, so, so teachers, Shatawale, how do you sanitize so your hands? 
this is a coffee bag foundation sanitizer. I see. And you know, this is how I pour it. I don't pour too much because sanitizers are like you know, fire this thing too as well. So okay, five. So five drops. I get my five drops. I see. You know, and you wash. You just bring it around your hand like this. Okay. You know? Make sure it gets in between your fingers. Interesting. You know, <laughs> touch your touch your nails well. Make sure you clean everything. That's how I sanitize myself. Oh, I see. Know? And get it like this, you know, okay. onto your wrist. Then you're good to go. Then I can shake you. <laughs> well, we are not shaking at this time. We'll have to wait <laughs> till social distancing is over. But quickly, give us a time for your concert before you go. And, you know, how long is it going to be on online? Well, um, it's going to be an hour in concert, you know, because I don't really want to disturb my neighborhood as well okay. so much because I'm going to do it at my pool side. Yeah, I'm really organizing a whole lot, covering my pool, you know, my live band. And I'm actually going to set up a stage um, that oh, is going to okay. look like a real show. Yeah, you know, so people should just try and watch this so we can all learn from it. So other artists can also do it nice. you know, in their homes, in your own small way, you know. So yeah. it's going to start from 8 and end at 9 o'clock. Okay. What time is it starting? Just so we all make sure we tune in at the right time. Okay, so it's going to start from 7. It, when is you know, it? Is it on Saturday or Sunday? Run. Saturday. Saturday, 7 p.m. Saturday, 7 p.m. Okay, okay. All right. I guess that if we're able to request some of our favorite songs, you perform them for us um, on the night. No problem at all. I'm performing on the live part, but I'm, I'm going to have Barrowski as well to do some DJ nice. stuff. Nice. So. Any song anybody wants, I'm going to do them. I'm going to do that for them. Please take a bullet for your fans, okay? The coronavirus bullet. I take it for us. For you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Shatawale, for speaking to us. It's been a pleasure. Right, girl, and uh, yeah, so he much, ran uh, us through how uh, he sanitizes his hands. It's COVID 19 360 is an all round discussion mm -hmm. on everything coronavirus. We'll be back with more. Welcome back. You're still watching COVID-19 360 right here on TV3. And I've been sending your messages in. Well, quickly, let me read a couple of them. This one says, good morning. Please, I want to ask if Togo has recorded any cases. Well, yeah. uh, we'll be finding out we that have, and then we'll I have that update here. It says that uh, 23 hours ago, Togo confirmed 34 cases. So, yes, wow. they have recorded cases as well. Okay, moving on. I suggest that the military people enforce their work more effective than before because some of we Ghanaians want to take the law into their hands. Hashtag current. Well, he wanted to say coronavirus. Okay, moving on. It says, hi, Bella. I think Ghana could have stopped the virus from entering the country on the immediate hearing of its spread over other parts of the globe, especially the northern region of the globe. However, I will still take this privilege to congratulate the security services uh, we have here in Ghana for a yeoman's job over the past two days. Thank you. That is from Ni from Adenta. Good morning, TV3. I don't think we're serious as a country in fighting this dangerous enemy called COVID-19. I was weeping this morning when I heard the information minister say they are not going to force anybody for the mass testing. So then what is the point in the lockdown? Please, TV3, give the MPP Nana ad government that uh, they must be up to task. Omega 1 from whole West constituency. Uh, it goes on to say the Italian PM or Prime Minister has declared it uh, beyond human control. The people of Italy have surrendered. They have come out into the streets prostrating before God, saying only Jesus can save them now. Finally, the last one. I think government officials should demonstrate to the people of Ghana the measures to curb this deadly COVID-19. Social distance should be seen among the officials. There should also, they should also try using sanitizers to encourage the masses, washing of hands before the masses. Thank you. Well, uh, okay. I agree with the, the last message, I should say. Our leaders, we should see them do more of this often so that it sends a message down to you know, the ordinary Ghanaian that if your leader is doing that, it means that definitely you can do it as well. Yeah, well, well, let me just quickly say that uh, based on the Minister of Health's um, update this morning, he did mention there was a constraint on the testing kits, and that is why they are not necessarily doing a compulsory test. Now, they are looking out for the people who may be showing symptoms and also contact tracing. Now, the people that would fall under contact tracing are the ones who may have come into contact with the travelers that were quarantined, and the travelers that came in 
earlier than the ones that were mandatorily uh, quarantined. And so they are making sure that at least they exhaust the test kits on the people that are more likely or most likely to have, to have the virus. Eventually, if the other test kits come in, I'm sure that Later we will be on, able to... Exactly. Yeah, um, I think that hasn't gone down, down well with a lot of people, yeah. I should say. Exactly. But then we're still advocating for mass testing. And so we're hoping that more test kits can come in. Currently, we have maybe about 40,000 or so yes. uh, because we received 20,000 from the Jack Ma Foundation. Government also mentioned that they had received 10,000 a few days ago. Now we're hearing that it's a little above the 50,000 test kits that they had mentioned that they were ordering. And so hopefully as many people can test so exactly. that we can drive away coronavirus. It's important. There's some more messages Definitely. Uh, behind you as well. Yes. So let me move on to this. It says, um, Hi, Bella. This is Mundi from Arena in Accra Central. Wow, somebody called Mundi. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to ask about the information concerning the missing person confirmed positive of the virus. Okay. Wow. Good morning, Bella. Keep doing the good work. TV3 is doing well by educating the public on COVID-19. Try and do that in the local languages as well. Of course, definitely this morning, the information minister and the rest of the ministers were doing more of the local you know, languages as well so that ordinary Guineans can understand what is being communicated. Now, moving on, it says, please, those who have been discharged from home management, meaning they are infected, but they want them to be treated at home or what? I don't get it. Hmm. Okay. Good morning, please. We ask to stay at home, but there's no water. Or we were asked to stay at home, but there's no water at Liberia camp and some of, you know, uh, the areas in Kaswa. Well, that's, okay. that's pretty sad. So the question concerning whether those who have been discharged for home management are being, uh, what, meaning they are infected. Well, it was said that they had tested negative a number of times. Exactly. And so they discharged them to go home um, and they are under some monitoring as well. And so they'll keep testing them to ensure that they don't have the virus. And for some other people that also were being treated, I think, at home, they mentioned that their cases are not as severe. And so they are in self-isolation and they are still being monitored. And so eventually they'll do some or conduct some more tests and eventually they'll find out. From the woman who scaled the wall in Tamale as well. So the authorities are still on Hans' forehead. They still have not found it. There was a tip off some, in some parts of the northern region, but when they got there, she was not there. And so we'll update you on that. So viewers, to you as well, we would want to know what is life like in uh, mandatory quarantine because that's what we can call it, the lockdown. And so if you can send us videos of what you've been up to, this is day three. What have you been doing? What are you up to currently aside watching us as well? We want to see what's going on in your homes as well. So send us videos via social media and also via WhatsApp as well. Uh, let's have a, a, well, a you know, social that. media has been awash with a lot of videos. Our celebrities, especially Jackie, appear, and Kobe are the likes. Yeah, and TikTok has become more popular as well. Well, Bella, we're waiting for your. I, I don't even know where video. to find TikTok in the first place. <laughs> like, I, I'm enjoying the videos that they are putting out. I don't even know how it works. So what? There's already a voice underneath. Exactly. So you just have to act, act out. You know, the are voice. you on TikTok? I joined, but I'm still trying to figure out how it works. But yeah. it looks like. I'll be dropping mine. Very Maybe soon. I should try. I like the whole acting part. You know, and hello. Where are you know and I think it's fun. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I don't know if you're on TikTok as well. If you're doing that, let us know. Yes. Uh, we'll see if we can show you some videos from Lydia Forsen, Jackie, yes. and a few other people as well. Hopefully, we can record one someday <laughs> and, 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 and let you see that as well. But keep your messages coming in. Keep the videos coming in as well. Remember that this is COVID-19 uh, 360. And every day, starting from today, from 10 a.m. to 11.30, a.m. We will come your way with updates on what's happening across Africa and across the world, especially with updates from Ghana. And so I'll be doing that with Anita. Yes, it's been a great one hour 30 minutes and before we go we say tough times don't last but tough times may last depending on how well you appreciate and adhere to all the preventive measures that has been outlined social distancing very important if you have nothing yeah. to do outside please 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 stay at home wash your hands frequently with soap and running water sanitize as many times as possible and please Stay at home. Don't come outside and say you're coming to watch what is happening. There's nothing outside. I should say, well, uh, coming to buy credit. No, no, well, no. Well, yeah, you can buy credit <laughs> online now. But you, so, exactly. Yeah, so mobile there's really money no and the point. rest. Banking online. Everything is sorted. Yeah, definitely. And so that'll be it for today. Remember that if you're showing any signs and symptoms, especially 
for the people who uh, got into the country from the 15th onwards. There's a line for you to call, which is 112. Just call that line, let them know what your symptoms are, and I'm sure the health service will be there to either conduct a test or help you further. Now, also, if you want some information on coronavirus in Ghana, you're looking for that information, there's a WhatsApp number that you can send your message to, and they will respond at 055-5311-311. Let me make it easier. So 555 Three one one three one one. Just send a WhatsApp message to this number, and you can get all the updates that you need. I think that you can also call three one one, and there'll be someone on the line to speak to you to give you all the information that you require. And so, at this point, as it stands, one hundred and ninety-five cases in the country with five deaths, um, and a few others have recorded. I think between thirty-one to thirty-eight people, um, you know, have yeah, been discharged as well. So. This is where we're going to leave you today. And Happy I hope birthday, by the way. Oh, thank Happy you very birthday. much. Interesting that I spent the last five or six hours on air I on know. my birthday. But we'll be back tomorrow, same time, 10 to 11.30 a.m. to keep you updated on happenings around the world. My name is Berlin Mindy. And my name is Anita Ikeo Have a good morning.